company. So, you know, I got to put some of this money aside. I don't know. I don't know what to. I, it's very hard to decide. So really, I want to pray about this. Let's say a little prayer. God, you've blessed me with so much. Every single day, help me to have the good judgment to use this money wisely, to use this money to meet my needs and some of my wants, and to use this money to support the church and to be generous with others. It's not always easy. I need your help. Thank you, God. Amen. Thanks for helping. Now wait. I am going to give you money to put... I, the offering plate doesn't come back here to me. So can I trust you to put some money in the offering plate for me? Okay. You can put that in. You put that in. George, can you put that in? Okay, thank you. Now wait. I'm going to give you each a couple dollars, which isn't much, but you decide what to do with that, okay? You want, you want my advice? That's your money. Here. My advice is you put one, one dollar in the plate to be generous and you take one dollar home and use it however you want. That's my advice, okay? I think that would make me happy and that would make God happy. And maybe your parents have a different idea. They get to tell you more than me, okay? Wow, did you ever have so much money in your hands before? <laughs> you do? Well, don't forget which one you're supposed to put in the offering plate for me because I don't get the offering plate back here, okay? All right, you can go back now. Well, is that enough of a sermon for today or should I continue? <laughs> oh. I have so much trouble with these things. So I think it was Mark Twain is credited with the statement, I'd rather be, or I've been rich and I've been poor. I'd rather be rich. You've heard that statement? Is this still working? Wouldn't all of us rather be rich than poor? Yeah. Now, I think it was the last time I was here, or maybe the time before that, I, uh, something led into the, the subject of wealth. And I asked uh, who was uh, truly wealthy, if there were any here among the 1%. And you know what? I got a laugh out of that question. <laughs> Now I want to ask, is there anyone here that's genuinely poor? You know, living at the poverty level. I don't expect you to raise your hand. But if you are, I hope someone in the church knows it. And uh, I hope you're willing to ex accept the support and help of your church family when it's needed. Jesus doesn't seem to say much about the middle class. And that's pretty much where we all sit. There isn't a lot in scripture uh, directed at the middle class. I don't know, I'm sure there was a middle class, a working class in biblical days. But most of Jesus' instructions or condemnations or suggestions have to do with the very wealthy or the very poor and the relationship between those two. Now, maybe we don't want to be wealthy, but we probably have more of a fascination about the wealthy than we do the poor. Have you ever been to a party game where the question is, what would you do with your last dollar? No, but many of us have been to a party game or even just talked around our dining room tables. What would we do if we won the lottery? We like to envision wealth. 
and what we would do if we just had a little more of it. And I venture to guess that most of us here, when we talk about what we would do if we won the lottery, we include giving a lot of it away. I believe most of us would want to do that if we had the money. The trouble is, we do have the money. <laughs> Not that much money, but we, our needs are met, and many, many of our wants. So it's really a question of how we use that money. And I question that and pray about that on a regular basis. Help me to use my resources wisely and well. What is Jesus' real lesson here? It can't possibly be that we should give everything we have and end up being dependent or perhaps dying, as this poor widow might have thought it was her last day, so why not give her last two cents? Surely that is not what Jesus is teaching here. It might have been uh, one of attitude. Don't be puffed up when you give. And again, it's hard, you know, to know you're putting a lot of money in the plate and not feel a little bit proud about it. It might be that Jesus is saying when you're down and out, when you're on your last penny or your, maybe your last nerve, <laughs> fall back on me. Depend on me to see you through. What I think is that Jesus is lifting up this poor woman, showing her respect and using her as a model of the kind of characteristics he wants us all to have. Now, you know, there are a lot of people, I hope none here, but there are a lot of people who fault the poor, who think people are poor only because they've done something wrong, or they haven't done enough, or they have spent their money uh, they've squandered their money, or they're lazy, and they're not willing to work. I personally, I, I know some very, very rich people, and I know some very, very poor people. And personally, I find the lives of the poor more fascinating. How do they survive? How they negotiate the daily needs of their lives? And um, I'll just give you an example, a couple of examples of uh, my experiences with the poor. First of all, I, um, with a friend, delivered Meals on Wheels in the center of Reading. And um, even for someone like myself, we delivered Meals on Wheels in Birdsboro as well. We saw some pretty poor situations there. As a pastor, you step into people's homes, many of them are poor situations. But serving Meals on Wheels in the center of Reading was an eye-opener. And I'm sure that many of those people that we encountered are mentally ill. I worked as a chaplain at the Highlands. And working as a chaplain at, at the Highlands, at least, required uh, certain immunizations. Uh, including a TB test. I was required to go to the same place for uh, the initial test and back there to have it tested. It was patient first over at Broadcasting Square, pretty close to my home. And I have a pretty reliable vehicle. And um, I don't have any children or other obligations at home. So to go over and get this test and three days later go back, was not really difficult for me, but it took a couple of half days at least uh, as I sat there and waited for my name to be called. And that's when I began to think about the people that worked at the Highlands that used the bus, the people that uh, wash the dishes in the kitchen and the people that clean um, the common areas and work in the skilled nursing in the lowest you know, paid level. 
if they're using public transportation, how difficult it would be to take two days out of your life just for this test, especially if you had children at home to care for. And then uh, I have another person uh, I know pretty well, lives at the poverty level, has a mental disability, will never be able to work out of that because you can only earn so much. If you're earning disability, you can only earn so much on top of that, which always keeps her at the poverty level. Her friend's mother died, and he gave her his mother's car. Wonderful gift, an old beat-up car. But then the inspection time came. And it's an eye-opener when you are paying literally half your income for a, not a really great apartment in Reading and uh, to keep a car going. And I hear people say, well, what a, can't they buy a bar of soap? <laughs> well, yeah, but it's pretty hard to get to a laundromat without a car. And if you've been to a laundromat lately, even that's pretty expensive. I bought a little comfy comforter for our dog to lay on, I think for $5 at Goodwill. And the first time it needed to be laundered, it cost me $15 at the laundromat. <laughs> so that I hadn't been to the laundromat in a long time. So those are just some eye-openers about poverty. Surely there are people that are uh, working the system that are poor. But you know, there are people that are doing that that are very wealthy as well. Most poor people really want to live better like we do. And I think Jesus in this lesson is really taught, teaching us about attitude. What is our attitude about the poor as opposed to the wealthy? And lifting this woman up and honoring her for not only her amazing gift, but for her amazing faith and trust in God's providential care. So it's a small gift, all she had. We all have small gifts to give a portion of what we have. Some people need to give more to maintain their homes or their churches or their families. But we need to have a common attitude about it. Humility and thankfulness and trust. Humility and thankfulness and trust. Qualities that Jesus exhibited as he made his way to Calvary, giving all he had, like that poor widow, all he had for the good of the world. Not much, really, in terms of human existence, a human life. All he had, pouring out his blood and having his body broken, but look, look where that has led to. Centuries later, blessed and enough. Amen. Take my
We'll now say the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rooted in God's abundant love for the world, let us pray for our neighbors, the church, and all of creation. Healer of our weary souls, grant us patience and understanding as we seek to find a permanent pastor. Infuse us with your love. Let our spirits be refreshed in worship today by all who share your good news with us. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Renew your church, O God. Make us servants to one another for the sake of the gospel. Instill a heart for service and a passion for justice in our bishops, deacons, pastors, lay leaders, and all those who serve you through the church. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Renew your creation, O God. Sustain the earth and seas and all that is in them. Kindle in us a reverent awe for all creatures great and small, and strengthen us in our pursuit of climate justice. Merciful God, receive all. Renew the nations, O God. Heal our nation's veterans from the unseen wounds of war. Tend to their trauma and soothe burdened consciences. Guide leaders of the world to end conflicts, especially in Israel and Gaza and Ukraine, and pursue peace. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Renew your people, O God. Protect those in our communities who are vulnerable or ill. Accompany persons who are unemployed or underemployed, children who are in foster care, and those who live alone. Watch over and uphold them. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Renew this congregation, O God. Give us clarity in our mission and boldness in our witness. Bless our ministries that attend to basic needs of any who lack sufficient resources that all may live with dignity. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Happy are those whose help was in you. We give thanks for all your faithful ones who praised you as their God all their life long. As we eagerly wait for you, inspire us by their lives of service. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We offer our prayers to you, gracious God, trusting in your boundless love for all that you have made through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. And we continue now with our offering, a portion of what God has first given to you.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus, our portion and our cup, you offered yourself in love for the world. And in this meal, you nourish us with your life. Fill us with your abundance that we may feed the hungry and welcome the stranger, trusting in your name. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. It was in the night in which he was betrayed that our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. Behold, God is making all things new. Take your place in the new creation. You may be seated. And I invite those communing in the pew or at home Uh, with us to commune at this time. body of Christ given for you.
Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Faithful God, you have spread before us a feast of rich food and drink in the body and blood of your Son. Now send us out to labor with you in service to the world you have made and among the people you have made your home. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. May the ancient one enthroned, the crucified one now risen, the indwelling one poured out, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Peace. Encourage one another in Christ.